Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and jump into some of the new 3.0 changes, um, or at least the beta changes that are going to be hitting in, I guess, this current patch that we're playing on. So this video is going to go ahead and go over changes to shock, chill, and power and frenzy charges. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Previously, Chill always slowed its target by 30%, and Shock always had an inc well, always increased damage taken by 50%. The amount of cold or lightning damage in the hit caused uh, that caused the ailment compared to the maximum life of the target determined how long they would last. So basically, if you use like an Aquamarine Flask, Nice Meme, or like Arctic Armor to chill targets, it would always be a chill by 30%, or even like a Vortex chill, or even you getting chilled by chilled ground. And prior, if you use something like a Vol Lightning Trap that applied Shock Ground, it was always 50% increased damage. Chill no longer slows enemies by a fixed amount for a variable duration. Now Chill will slow enemies uh, for a duration of 4 seconds by an amount based on the cold damage dealt to the enemy. A purely cold hit which removes 50% of an enemy's life will slow that enemy down by 30% for 4 seconds, scaling linearly down to 0% at no cold damage dealt. Similarly, I fucked that up. Uh, shock no longer increases damage taken by enemies by a fixed amount for a variable duration. Now shock will apply to enemies for a duration of 4 seconds and increase the amount of damage the shock the enemy takes based on the lightning damage dealt to the enemy. A purely lightning hit... Shouldn't it just be a pure lightning hit? A purely lightning hit which removes 50% of an enemy's life will increase the damage that an enemy takes by 50% for 4 seconds scaling linearly down at down to 0% at no lightning damage dealt. Shock is only applied by critical strikes or based on your shock chance. That's the same thing with freeze chance, I'm assuming, right? These changes make it easier for build, uh, for build that focus on bonuses against enemies that are shocked or chilled to use those effects against high life enemies, particularly bosses. So I guess they're saying they want it to be easier to shock now for high end bosses? I don't know if that's what I got from that. I know they're trying to nerf Vol Lightning Trap, so that seems like a pretty big hit. These maximum magnitudes for these ailments apply, or actually a play, uh, even in cases where you have stats that would increase the effect. This means that a player with 100% increased effect of chill would only have to remove 25% of a monster's life with a cold damage uh, to slow them by the maximum 30%. Because this hit normally slows by 15%. Did I skip it? No. Because this hit would normally slow by 15% and that value is increased by 100%, increasing the effect of chill uh, further or dealing more cold damage will not slow down the monster. Okay, so 30% is the max. Fuck, this is like retarded to read for some reason. It will just make it easier to reach that 30% cap. Shock with a cap of 50% increased damage taken works the same way. Alright, so they're not they're not changing the values at all, they're just making it they're just making it different, so like as you scale towards them. It's applied, you know, differently. So basically, it's applied via damage rather than just status effect. Hits that would shock or chill foes less than 5% of the ailment effects are ignored. A chill that would only slow an enemy by 4% will not be applied. So there is a minimum requirement, just like anything else. Chilled ground or any chill not caused by hits has a slowing effect of 10%, unless otherwise specified. So Aquamarine Flask is garbage. Shock ground or any shock not caused by hit increases damage taken by 20%. You know, I think this actually makes it more friendly to players as well, because that means that when we get shocked by shock ground, shock ground is now only 20% and not 50%. That's pretty fucking huge. There are new reminders for te or for reminder text for shock and chill, so you can see these values in game, but they may not be applied to all the correct stats yet. All right, now for the big beefy one. Another quick note. I like how they say quick note. Power charges now grant 30% increased critical strike chance per charge, down from 50%, and 4% more spell damage per charge. I just want to state right now that I am 100% for that change. Um, Frenzy charges now grant 4% more damage with attack skills, as opposed to 4% more damage. Ha, <laughs> man. Okay, so let's talk about that for a little bit. So... I know a lot of people are really upset about these charge changes. I think I, for one, am, am siding with Gigi Yi um, to an extent because there are nodes on the tree that need to be adjusted. So, for example, let's, let's pull up a node. With Frenzy Charges being adjusted, that means that Master Sapper now has a 15% chance 
for a frenzy charm. For a bit, well, it has a 15% chance to gain 4% attack damage when a trap is triggered by an enemy. Now, please, can someone tell me why I would want trap damage or um, attack damage for my traps? Because uh, well, uh, I'm so confused. I hit like four wrong scenes while doing that. But like, I don't. So like, I don't know. I think they still need to adjust a couple things, which means that. I think we could see some trap changes in the near future, so uh, I'm definitely on the positive side of that. Um, I don't really know. I think it's. I still think this is almost kind of rushed because I feel like there are still things that need to be adjusted by this, like the Tinkerer's Chest. There's a new Trapper unique that comes out that gives you a chance to get Frenzy Charges. Uh, that's kind of weird, right? Because if, I'm assuming that uniques take a little while to design, but these balance changes only take a minute, so I feel like this is still kind of being rushed. Now, on the side note, though, I don't really mind the whole power charge generation because the power charge generation allows other builds to utilize power charge on crit, which I still don't really like, but I still kind of like the whole 4% more damage um, for spells, right? Isn't that what it is? 4% more spell damage per charge. I know that this, this indirectly kind of buffs my Freeze Pulse Totem build, uh, my Freeze Pulse Totem Scion, so that's pretty cool. She gets a pretty fatty buff. I think she used almost 10 power charges, so that's almost like 40% more damage. So I'll take it. My Freeze Pulse Totem build got buffed, boys. Everybody go play it now. Um, this also, I think, makes Void Batteries a bit stronger because dual wielding them is 8% more spell damage now. So that's pretty neat as well. I guess overall, I'm pretty, I'm pretty interested to see how this works its way uh, into launch because I still think that this specifically right here this needs a lot of work to be done still. I think there's a lot of unique balancing, um, specifically around the frenzy charges. Um, so that's something that really needs to be adjusted. Now, one thing to be, let me see if I can keep this up for you guys, hold on. There was one other node I want to highlight for you guys. If I cannot find it here, we'll post it in the comments below. Let me see, I apologize for not having this up ahead of time. Let me see if I can find it for you guys. The trickster node, has been changed. Swift Killer. Let me see if I can find it here. Ascendancies. Trickster. Okay. Swift Killer, if you guys are familiar with what Swift Killer does, has been adjusted. So you get plus one to max frenzy charges and power charges. You get 5% increased damage over time per charge and a 15% chance to gain a Frenzy Charge and Power Charge on kill. Now they're trying to make it so you cannot properly utilize Frenzy and Power Charges at the same time. Um, but anyway, that's beside the point. Of course, you'd still get the, the base crit from it. But anyway, that's pretty much about it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Remember, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, I'll be putting out a couple more videos uh, regarding the balance changes of the current beta. Uh, which is wave four over the span of probably 24 hours. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. I think I said that already, my bad. Um, and you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed the editing, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.